ability to teach our children. Leave this conference with a new mentality that God is depending upon you, not on a casual basis. Look at the society we are. If we don't teach these children about God, what will happen? Means coming back to God. It means be right with me again. It means getting forgiveness for wandering away. I'm done of pretense. I'm done of self-deceit. I'm done of wasting my life. Lord, I have to do something. Comfort them. Comfort them. 
them, Lord. In Jesus' name we are praying. Let me never be a victim. I don't know what you are waiting for. Let me leave this service before you pray. Oh Lord, keep me and my family from tragedy, sudden death, evil killing. Deliver me, O God. Let me always be in the right place at the right time.
Is that all right? Yeah. You know, there are some terminologies that we have alluded to the celebrities, you know. But which is not, amen? It's for everybody. Praise God. Amen. I said praise God. Amen. All right, but all of us, I'm not going to find with PowerPoint today because I want to enjoy my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the people in television, they call it life is good. How many of you know that life is good? Life is so good. Nobody wants to leave this place. We want to go to heaven, but we don't want to go. No, 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 I want to know the definition of life enjoyment. Anybody who has an idea how to enjoy life? Everybody sign it now. <laughs> you want to enjoy life, you want to enjoy life. Praise God, you are waiting for Pastor Lada to teach you. Yes, uh, you want to go on vacation. Go. To enjoy life is to go on vacation. Go. Any other idea? You have the idea? Happy abundance. Abundance of what? Abundance of wealth. Plenty, plenty money in our pocket. Lord, give out plenty money. In Jesus, we any other person. Yes, money. How do you enjoy life? By, by having the presence of God. May you have the presence of God. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, the God we serve is a good God. Amen. Amen. And uh, even before we are talking about grace, because everyone is talking about grace, 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 grace. Before the issue of the terminology of grace, God has already put in place how to enjoy grace. Enjoy life. Hallelujah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't see it as such. And so because of that, we put ourselves under stress. There's something we read this morning, which many people know as the law of Moses. Amen. As what? Law of Some people call it Ten Commandments. How many of you have gone to work and in your office they say these are the ten laws of this office? Nobody. What do they do? They give you a good. There are other channels, devilish channels, that will frustrate you, frustrate your life, frustrate your marriage. They have nothing to offer you. The only way you can enjoy this life I have given you, number one, connect yourself to me. Number two, stay connected. So it says stay connected. Bow your heads. Lord, in this one world, you have given me, I want to enjoy it. And I understand to enjoy it, I need to stay tuned to you. I need to stay connected to you. Help me to connect with you. Shall we pray this morning? Yes, speak to the Lord. Anyway, you have disconnected yourself. As God, I'm connecting myself back, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. The number three guideline he gave to us to enjoy life is what? Verses six and what? And seven. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my what? Commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name, what? In vain. What is the third way by which God says you can enjoy your life? 
the last two verses. He said there was a man who spoke as God. And the Bible says, an angel came and did what? Smote him. He didn't die. Worms were coming out. He decayed immediately. Anyone that will want to enjoy this world will not take God and be mocking him. I want to warn you, people of God, whether on your phone or your church, you know, praise the Lord. During the week, I saw, uh, uh, what's it called? A video clip. I didn't watch it. But one of the respected uh, persons I know said, oh, it was a, a they, they, they brought some comedians to church. And the comedians were making all kinds of jests, I guess. And uh, those who would say, oh, this one make me laugh. <laughs> it's so funny. And I just put a comment. The church is not a picnic. The church is a clinic. The church is not an amusement park. It's not the place. The church is not a place for you to come on the altar. I'm making a mockery of God. Cha 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 cha. Coo -coo 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 -coo. And all kinds of things. We have a generation that want to enjoy life, have fun, by making mockery of God. Number four. So verse 8 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shall labor and go on thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou and thy servants, thy sons, thy daughters, thy maid servants, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle. Not that strangers what is within the gates, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. What is number four way by which you can enjoy your life? Fellowship. Fellowship. Yeah? Fellowship with God. Give her a big hand. You want to enjoy this life? Make God your father. You want to enjoy this world? Stay connected to God. You want to enjoy this world? Know what? Don't make a mockery of God. Number four, you actually go ahead and enjoy fellowship with God. Give God a big hand. I said, give God a big hand. You want to enjoy this world? He said, I was delighted when they said, let us do what? Go into the house of the Lord. Anyone that will enjoy this world, it must be a thing of joy, not compulsion, not begging. Whether it's in church or outside church. And in it, he also told us what? Hard work. He said, if you want to enjoy this one, I've given you seven days. In what? In a week. Six days to do what? To work. Seven days to do what? Come and fellowship with me. Come and sing. Come and dance. Spend your six days effectively. If you are a student, study what? Where? Well, for six days. If you are a worker, do what? Work hard. For what? For six days. And then on the seventh day, you cannot be busier than me. Glory be to God. I made the world. I did all that I needed to. And on the seventh day, I did what? I rested. But there are many people in our time, they are busier than God. They are what? 
They are busier than what? Than God. They want to walk for what? For seven days. Those who don't walk for what for seven days, they say, look, this is the only day I have now to do my laundry. Or my to wash my car. Are you listening to me? I'll spend the six days to go and make money. But this is the only day that I need to sit down and do what? And watch television. And enjoy myself. God said you can't enjoy life. Number one, without working. Because you need to make money. Amen. He put them in the garden. He said do what? Till the ground. You are not listening to me. Amen. Amen. Till the ground. But on the seventh day, do what? Rest. Don't say, don't spend all your life working without connecting with me and enjoying fellowship. Revibrate, re energize yourself. Let me give you fresh anointing for the week ahead. Let me empower you for the week ahead. Why do we go to church? Why am I preaching to you? Give you a, a what? Stimulate you, enjoy you for the week ahead. Come to me. Let me help you strategize for the new week. Let's move forward because of time. How many of you had? What's number one? Number two? Go on. Number four, and that's it. I work hard also. Don't just fellowship with God. Work hard. So I say, do what? He says, six days I gave you to work. God, the, the one way you can enjoy life is not to be idle. It's not to be idle. It's not to be an idolater or an idle talker who will spend all your six days. How are you doing? Hey, you sleep that one. How are you, brave? Hey, princess, and whatever. How are you? Hey, no! That's not how to spend your days. Spend the six days as a hard, responsible husband, responsible father, taking care of his home, working, not nothing about. And then on the seventh day, Come and dance. Come and relax. And then you also meant by that one, take what? Vacation. Hello? Abi? How do you enjoy your life? Is it not? He said, after you have worked a while, take what? Take vacation. After you have worked for 12 hours in a day, come home and rest. Are you hearing me? Glory be to God. Let's move forward. What's the next one now? Number 5, verses 12 to 13. Just 12 alone. Honor thy father and thy mother that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God given. How do you enjoy your life? Eh? Honor your father, your spiritual father and your God. But not the good father. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. Because you may think it's only your... Uh, no, your biological father. No. No. And he gives you a promise. This is not when I ask, how do you want to enjoy your life? I want to live long. He said, the way to live long is what? To honor your father. And your mother, yes. Children. Children. Obey your parents. Ooh. Obey Pastor Dada. Tell your neighbor, obey. Say it loud and clear. Obey Pastor Ojo. Obey Pastor Washaye. Obey Pastor Sunday Dada. And all pastors that you do. Because they are God's servants for you. You can enjoy your life. If we come here every day, we guide you. You disrespect it. You ignore it. Obey it. He said, 
Obey your fathers in the Lord. We interpret the Bible. That's what I'm doing. I tell you, the Lord says, Give, and it shall be what? Give it to you. He said, Nonsense. Not too late to hear. They've come again. Always asking for money. We are not asking for money. We are telling you how to enjoy life. If all you have is take all your money, quench it upon yourself, drinking wine, drinking beer, drinking alcohol, take it okay, you die. If all your money you have is you are going to sponsor evil, terrorism around the world, develop things and kill people, you die. You enjoy your life by works. Doing your best to obey the counsel. Finish up my sin. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. Yes and 2. Honor thy father and thy mother. Which is the first commandment. With promise. That it may be. Is this pastor that does what? Hello? How do you. Is it to enjoy your life? Is it the one you got me well with you? Hello sir. Hello, man. To enjoy the life so that it may be well with me. To enjoy your life for it to be well with me. Obey your father. Your spiritual. Your, yeah, finish up. That you may live. It's not medication that keeps you on there. It's not what? Mm -mm. It's not drug. That keeps you alive. It is God's power. It is God's protection. If God doesn't help you, nobody can help you. You can't pass an exam, read all you read, study all you study as you want to. If God doesn't help you, you are a dead person. Somebody study so hard, go to the exam or just collapse. In the bag. Come back again. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you this morning how to enjoy God. Because all you have learned about enjoying God is only who style. He was here on the, during the 21 days. And he gave a message and gave us. Eight presidents, big shop, and all kinds of people that gather themselves. The president of Walmart and, and uh, Wall Street, the one the, the from uh, the president, uh, the White House, all of them, and virtually all of them committed suicide. They died in the prison. Honor God. Some people will say, my parents are not born again. That's why they are calling for it. Your parents are not born again, but they gave birth to you. Your parents born you. Honor your parents. Take care of your what? Parents. Biological parents. You go to Nigeria. Father, uh, Pastor, I'm going to Nigeria. Uh, pray for me. Father, go with her. And then you come back. Pastor doesn't know you did. You don't know where they are selling grand nuts <laughs> in Lagos. I said, Pastor, thank you for praying for me. All I know is about you are praying. Oh, oh, Pastor, thank you. It went well. Hey. Hey. Is that how to take care of Pastor? You don't know, Pastor also has me. Hello? Every month, every year. One, one came, not a member of this church on, of, on, uh, on Wednesday. And put an envelope in my hand. When I got home, I saw this is your Christmas gift. Not a member. 
and put $200 there. That's how to greet pastor. <laughs>
He that killeth shall be what? Kill. You kill, they take you to what? To jail. Or do what? They kill, they kill you. So in this area of the world that they talk in grammar. You kill, you are what? You are killed. And they don't want to pay. You didn't hear me. Those who are what? Killing people don't want to. You kill 17 people, you are taking a lawyer to defend yourself. About what? A broken world. Call it what? A broken, a broken environment. It's a broken environment. That's why they are killing people where they are. Because there's no repercussion. How do you just take on and kill somebody? Some people will kill their wife because of money. They said they will marry another one. So that one has no life. You are the one that brought him. So people will take their own children and go on and use it for money ritual. Whoever kills, sit down there. Shall do what? Be killed. If you want to enjoy long life, you want to live your life, don't kill. Because whether you like it or not, you will be killed. If woman be do not cash you, God will cash you. God will do what? What's the next one? What's the next one? That's number six. Thou shalt not commit adultery. How do you want to enjoy life? By not running after other people's wives. You cannot enjoy your marriage. Look at me, men. By abandoning your wife and looking for another, another woman, mistress, concubine. Look at me, woman. You cannot enjoy your life by abandoning your matrimonial home and speaking out to her sexual affair with another man. That is not enjoyment. How many youths are here? Stand up. God bless you. Stand up, all of you. God bless you. Let me tell you how you cannot enjoy your life. You cannot enjoy your life when you are not married and you are having sex. You know why? Do you know why? Eh? Tell me why. Toss it. Tell me why. I want to hear from you. Let me start from you. You don't know why. Okay, you? You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Oh, okay, I will tell you. You can stand it. For not telling the truth. Glory be to God. Number one, you have disobeyed God. Because marriage and sex is within the parameter of God. If you cannot live for me, Let's go with chapter 6, chapter 7, verse 1. I thought I would finish before 1. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, these are the people of your own, writing to Paul, yes? It is good for a man not to touch a woman. It is good for a man that is not married, a girl that is not married, not to touch, yes? Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, incontinency, yes? Let each man have his own wife. Let each man have his own wife. And let each woman have her own wife. That is God's parameter. The reason you must not have sex before marriage, number one, you do what? You disrespect God. You mock God. You are telling God he doesn't know what is going. You are telling God you are in charge of your life. Number two, You go and get pregnant. You are going to school. Your parents sent you maybe for money 
of money from Nigeria, paid 24,000. One useless boy comes to you in five minutes in pregnancy. Your career is what? Shattered. You either have a, a pregnancy and then you are now doing what? Plan and manage what? Family planning. When you are not yet married, family, Plan. with family. No, with family, are you planning? Because now you are not, you are not covering up, you are not strategizing how to, whether to kill the child, whether to abort the child, that or no one thing. That's why you don't have sex. Number three, you want to know? You have devalued yourself. Listen, don't guess. What a man is looking for in a woman is virtue. Is what? That virtue is called virginity. When you are born around the world and do all sorts of things, you are now what? A second hand figure. You are now what? A prostitute. And you listening to me. What you have meant to give for your husband or give for your wife, you are wasting it. For you as men, you don't know what God has for. There is what they call spermatozoa. This is what they call sperm. It is what brings life. When you have sex before marriage, all the good little children that you have, you are wasting it. You want to know why you must not have sex before marriage? Many of you might be telling you have killed and destroyed your own. What happens? You can't have a child anymore. They now come to pastor like that. <laughs> God have mercy. It is your mouth of what? Mercy. What God has told you to do, you disrespect it. I cannot hold it on. What of infection? Have you heard of STD? Have you heard of STI? Have you heard of AIDS? You kill yourself before you start your life. Because you have disrespected the word of God. Next week, you will tell me more. All of you, your research. You say you don't know why you must not have sex. That's why you I'm giving you seven now, right? Have I? Do you sell this? None of you. Even if you know the man, the woman you want to marry, and you have set the date, until you marry, you are not married. I was counseling the girl during the week, standing there, oh, oh she's carrying the baby. Seven years, seven what? Seven what? Seven years of courtship. We were as long as you are, do you have this start? When I was uh, 21, I passed through your face. Our father was wealthy enough, not just to have a house in Lagos, but to build a house in Ileife. And we were caught. And we were young people. And we go to that house and do what? And study book, teacher mathematics. I met her as a virgin. She was born in England. We were born in Canada. She came to Nigeria. You want to know why you must not have sex? You don't destroy your future. Don't destroy your life. How do you enjoy your life? Not premarital sex. Not fornication. Don't let any boy deceive you and ignorate you. They take your nectar, they take your what? The sweetness out of you and waste it and go to another one and waste it and go to another one. And let me tell you one more. Do you want to hear? You are silent now. Say yes, sir. Yes. Say I want to hear more. I can't hear you. Say I want to hear more. Oh, this is more dead <laughs> If come, come, yes, 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 come. Come. This 
is a young man, right? If this one sleeps with a girl, right? All the evil in that girl is transferred to him. But we are hoping or not. You don't know. You don't know there is transfer. There is transfer. There is giving and receiving the sex. Evil. Evil. It's not just this man. There is a spiritual power behind it. But the Lord she has collected. Excuse me. For every person, in one second, he deposits his what? Into your life. That is treasures for them. Now, let's assume he has slept with somebody from South Africa. <laughs> he has slept with somebody from uh, Cameroon. Where are you from? He has slept with somebody from Liberia. He has slept with as many places. He has gone. And we are in Toronto. And he doesn't have to go there. Toronto is a cosmopolitan and a metropolitan place. Meaning that you don't need to go to South Africa to look for a girl from South Africa. They are around you in your house. All of them, they say a lot. <laughs> In Toronto, you have collected demons from 20 nations. And in one second of your careless life, he has sex with you. What has he done? He, he transfers that to you. And you also, assuming that because this one has gathered demons from 20 people and transferred to you, whoever is coming to you next, all the demons from those 20 nations is transferred back to what? To him. It's not one way traffic. All the demons in your life also are what? Transferred to what? To him. You want to hear that? God says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Give the Lord a big hand. fornication in your life, I cancel. Amen. Every effect of adultery, I cancel. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, I didn't have time, but let me say it. One of the things I put in my notes is uh, Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, please sit down. I'm going to pray with you now. All of you guys. I'm honest. The Bible says, Moses, I mean Abraham, had a wife. And he was going to what? He was going to Egypt. God didn't send him to Egypt because he had economic issues. And as he was going, he told the wife, he said, look, yeah, look keep quiet. When they want to say some things, don't say you are my wife. Say you are my what? My sister. They all said, okay, no problem. The moment you got there, the teacher said, ha, ha, ha. Don't believe her, believe her, sir. Chai! Now, who might be this? Before they know it, they are spoken to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, there is a beautiful girl. This one is from nowhere. She just landed. He said, are you telling me? He said, he said, bring her. She brought her. The Bible says, the mere fact she got there, every man, woman in that house was giving a plague. Diseases came upon them. So they knew something has happened. And the man had been there and called Abraham. Shall we you said, This is your sister. Yes. What is happening? Don't I take your wife? See all it, read it, read it. Because they, they will think I'm deceiving uh, from verse 11. Genesis 12. Genesis 12. And it came to pass. When he was not here to enter into Egypt. When Abraham was to enter Egypt, yes. That he said unto Sarah, 
Sancho said I. Behold now. Yes. Therefore, it shall come to pass. Yes. 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 And they will kill thee. And they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister. Thou art my sister. That it may be well with thee. That it may be well with thee. That's how we enjoy it. <laughs> you see this enjoyment? At the expense of your wife's life? No. Yes? And my soul shall live because of thee. Are you hearing that? And we have no life because of what? But because the others can be sleeping with her. Men, may God forgive you. Go ahead. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. And when Abraham was come into Egypt. As soon as God there. The Egyptians beheld the woman. They beheld the woman, yes. Very beautiful. The princes of Pharaoh were running around. And they said, Pharaoh, this is a good girl. And the woman was taken to Pharaoh's mouth. That's right. And he entreated. Yes. Yeah. And they began to, to give gifts to Abraham. And Abraham was taking it. Can you imagine wickedness? Abraham was taking what? Gifts. Yes, go ahead. This is, this is the Pharaoh giving oxen, giving car, giving all kinds of things. Are you listening? You <laughs> see this one? He said, no, she done. He's very down. Go ahead. And the Lord did what? Everybody in the house. Diseases came upon them automatically. Yes. And Pharaoh called Abraham. And Pharaoh called Abraham. What is it that thou hast done? What have you done to me? Why did thou not tell me that she was the wife? Who told her that? And who told him? Why? Because God does not want you to commit adultery. Amen. I forgot to tell you one. Men. Men. There's what they call. Children, look at the young ones. In Yogubala, there's what they call Magu. It's, they they, they don't know the game. And they don't know the cause of their books. When, when a woman is committing adultery, the Yogubas, and I think it's not only Yogubas, because I saw some things first in other parts of Africa. They have a sham they put on that woman. Any other man that is different from that husband, if he goes there to touch that woman, we do what? We suffer magu. They call it don't climb. Magu means don't what? Don't climb up. If you climb up, you climb death. And that person, as he does that, what will he do? Thunderbolt. Three times in return, we do what? Some will begin to cry. Ah! Why? After that one, in Buga. Why do you want to commit a <laughs> God is saying, stop messing up your life. Be content with your wife. Be content with your husband. You are not married. Stay close to God. Wait for your time to be married. Bow your heads, better than you are. Every uh, sexual escapade that I'm suffering from now, when still my life, Lord, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we are praying. Time is up. Uh, number eight, thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not. Say it now, thou shalt not. What must you not steal? If you steal, you are caught, you are, they will cut you. Hello? Thou shalt not steal. What's the next one? Thou shalt not bear false witness. 
not be a false witness against that they don't go about telling tales. What you have not seen, you say you have seen it. Creating chaos. You can't. I'm talking to you how to enjoy God this morning. It's not my talent. You don't know that. You don't know what he has done. You are telling people, ah, I was there. I saw her. I did this for you. You did it. You can't enjoy your life by killing somebody with your mouth. And what's the final one? Stop envy. Stop. Someone says stop envy. Rise up on your feet. How do we enjoy God? And my life, number one, rise up, everybody, rise up. This, this someone has ended. I'm leaving this place now. I have another someone to preach. Yes? Connect, Connect to God. Stay connected. Stay connected. Eh? Reverence God, yes? Fellowship with God and work hard. Please make sure you put that word. Work hard. Six days. He said he has given you six days to do what? To what? There is dignity of labor. God says to you to enjoy your life is to have dignity of labor. Yes? Honor your what? Your parents. Yes? Thou shalt not do what? Kill. Thou shalt not what? Kill. Yes? Thou shalt not commit adultery or commit fornication. Yes?
Fellowship with your substance. Fellowship with your brethren. Fellowship with me. The Bible says, they that know their Lord shall be strong and they shall do exploit. There is no point uh, being a lukewarm Christian. As a matter of fact, in Revelation, the Lord says, you are either hot or cold. But to be lukewarm, I will spool you out. So if you are watching this telecast, please jettison the shaky mentality. Embrace the ego mentality. Be a solid Christian. Be a dependable Christian that people can emulate. In your marriage, in your business, in your career, live for God. Let others that are coming. You know, egos don't live on this uh, below. They live high. You know, be somewhere that people can see you on the top and say, I want to be like this one. I want my marriage to be like this person's marriage or this couple's marriage and so on. Not fighting and doing all kinds of things. And also, for those who for any reason, you have not known the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, it is a free gift. I encourage you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Whatever we do here, the judgment is coming. Nobody lives forever. And one day we come. Nobody knows that day. I am believing God and praying that God, when I leave this place, I will make eternal life. And I don't want you also to go to hell. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. And uh, the Christian life is lived like this. How do you become an ego believer? Number one, you give your life to Jesus. Number two, you are committed to reading the word of God. Number three, you are prayerful. Number four, you witness the word of God. Number five, you fellowship. And number six, you give, you preach the gospel. When you do this habitually, you become an ego believer. You become solid. You become a reference point. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name.